Aha. All right. Well, have you ever been anticipating somebody coming or going to somebody's house? Isn't it exciting to think about, you know, just just waiting and watching? And here there's a little boy in the window just looking out there, just kind of waiting. And uh, who's somebody that you like to, uh, that you look forward to seeing? Do you have a relative that maybe they come around a certain time or maybe... Uh, anybody have somebody like that that you look forward to them coming? Livy? Ma'am and Papo, you know what? In our house, this one Christmas time, we were all excited because we were going to go to, we call them Mamma and Papo. That's our, their grandma and grandma's house. And we were going there to their house, and it was a storm. It was wintertime. It was Christmas, but there was a lot of snow on the ground. And they were looking forward to us coming, but they, uh, they called us on the cell phone. They said, you're probably not going to be able to make it. There's a lot of snow on the ground. And I remember there was actually piles of snow on the road where the snow plow had plowed through, and there was a big hump in the road that you had to go over. And I remember we'd, we'd go over and we'd hit the bump. And we said, we can make it, we can make it. And we kept driving. We thought, oh, no, we're not stuck. And we kept driving a little bit further and we, a little further. And finally, we got right to their house. And I remember them coming out, and they were so excited. They put their hands in the air. Yay, they were cheering for us. We made it. They were so excited that we finally arrived. Well... Listen, in our Bible lesson today, people had been waiting for somebody for a very, very, very long time. Now, when I tell you this, you're not going to believe it. They had waited for over a thousand years. You say, wait a minute here. How do you wait for somebody for a thousand years? That doesn't even make sense, does it? Because that would be longer than you would live. In fact, they had, you know, for many years, people had told their children, they said, somebody's coming. Somebody's coming. You be ready. In fact, in our story today, we start with a man. He's kind of dressed a little bit strange. He didn't kind of fit in with everybody else. He lived out in the wilderness. And the Bible says he ate something called locusts. Now, some people think that may have been a plant. And some people think it might have actually been creepy little crawly bugs. <laughs> but anyhow, this man, John, had an important message. He said that somebody is coming. And he was, uh, kept telling people, he said, you need to change your ways, you need to repent, because this person is coming, they called the Messiah. And people were waiting, people were anticipating, people were listening to John talk, and they would come out to hear him way out in the wilderness. They would, and, and they didn't have cars where they could just drive out there and stop the car and get out. They had to walk or maybe, maybe ride some sort of donkey or camel out in the wilderness. And John would tell them all about this man that was coming, the Messiah. And people were getting excited that people were interested. He said he's going to be coming very, very soon. Well, they had heard that for a long, long time. But one day when John was talking, he, reached, he looks out and he says this. He says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Well, who was he talking about? This Messiah, this Lamb of God. What's his name? Jesus. All right, I was going to say, I hope you guys know who I'm talking about. Yes, his name was Jesus. Well, that day, as some of the people were listening, one of the people that was listening, his name was Andrew, and he had his friend there with him. Uh, his, uh, and the two of them were listening. Man, they just loved uh, to hear what John had to say. And they were really interested in this fellow, Jesus. And, uh, and so after the, everything was over, they decided to talk to Jesus and spend some time with Jesus. And they actually said, they said, where do you live? Well, that's a good question, isn't it? And they wanted to find out. And Jesus said to them, he said, well, come on, come and see. And guess what they got to do? They got to spend the day with Jesus, just talking with Jesus, spending the time with him. Well, after a while, they started thinking about something. You know, here we are getting, people have waited thousands of years for this man, the Messiah, for Jesus to come. And they started thinking, you know, maybe we should tell somebody else that we got to see Jesus. That we got to spend the day uh, with the Messiah. And so this one man, his name was Andrew. Guess what he did? He decided, he said, you know what, I'm going to go and I'm going to get my brother Peter. And he said, I'm going to bring him to Jesus. And so Andrew, he goes, he finds his brother Peter. Actually, his name was Simon at this time. I'm sorry, I, I mixed up the name. 
at first. First he's called Simon, but we're going to know his name later as Peter. But anyhow, he says, I'm going to go get my brother. And he goes and gets his brother, and he brings him and brings him to Jesus. And Jesus actually uh, meets him and meets him, and he knows him first as Simon. But he says, you know what? He says, I'm going to call you Peter, which means a, a stone. And anyhow, so anyhow, this is, uh, these, these people, they got to meet Jesus. But the man we're going to talk about this week specifically is this na- man by the name of Peter. That's what our, if you saw the sign out front, if you saw some of the papers uh, on your way in, we're going to learn about this man, Peter. That's actually Jesus talking to Peter right there from the back. And, and, uh, but this man, Peter, and also Andrew, his brother, they did something for a living. They were fishermen. Now, we have a, uh, this is supposed to be our fishing boat up here to represent uh, their fishing boat. But they would actually go out and they would fish, it would seem, at night. Now, uh, they didn't have, you know, spotlights like people might have today or, or things like that. But they would go out and maybe the best time to fish was at night. Now, how did they fish? Did they fish with fishing poles like this? When we think about fishing, you know, you cast a fishing pole. What did they use? What's this right here? What do you, what do you think they used? A net, all right? They would take their net and they would throw it out in the water and then they would pull it in and they would drag it in and they would fill that net full of fishes. Well, something strange happened this night. Have you ever been fishing and maybe one day somebody seems to get all the fish and you get absolutely nothing? Oh, they just, and you can see them here. They're at the end of the night. It's morning, they're tired, they're worn out from the night before. And they're sitting there, they're trying to fix their nets. You see the big hole in their net right there. And they had caught nothing. Didn't catch anything the entire night. Well, well that day, just as they were coming in uh, in the morning and getting ready, uh, you might say normally when other people were selling their fish uh, to make some money or whatever they did at at the beginning of the day, Jesus was there. And he, a lot of people were here listening to him and wanting to hear him and talk to him. And, and people were actually, the Bible says, pressing upon him. They wanted to get closer. They were asking him questions. Excuse me, excuse me. And everybody get closer and closer and closer until Jesus was right next to the water. And you know what he decided to do? He said, Peter, he said, can I use your boat? <laughs> he said, I'd like to get out in your boat, and I would like to talk to the people from out in the boat. And that's what Jesus did that day. He talked to the people and uh, from Peter's boat, and, and the people listened to what Jesus had to say. Well, as they were out there in the water, uh, but before we get to that, I forgot about something, because I wanted to back up here and think about those empty nets for just a minute. I forgot. I get ahead of my story. Because you know what? Sometimes we have a picture of a girl here. You notice how she's feeling a little empty right there? Have you ever felt this way? Just like the disciples, they're, they're, uh, just like Peter, you might say, his net was empty. He didn't catch any fish. Uh, after he expected to catch a lot of fish and his net was empty. Well, you know, sometimes even though on the outside their fish net was empty, but, you know, sometimes we feel empty on the inside. And we're going to talk this week about something called the gospel. We're going to talk about why Jesus came to this earth uh, and why he lived his life and then he died on the cross for our sins. But, you know, the reason that uh, we have emptiness inside of us is because of something called sin in this world. And the reason at times we feel lonely, the reason we feel sad, is because there's something called sin. Does anybody know what sin is? Sin is things that we do or say or think that displease God. And when we feel, you might say, empty on the inside, oh, it's not always because we did something wrong, specifically right then, but you know what? We miss uh, a relationship with God. And when we sin, we break that relationship with God. And just like maybe you, you've done something and hurt somebody's feelings and you miss spending time with them, we have sadness at times. We have loneliness at times because we want a relationship with God. And God wants to have a relationship with us. Well, Jesus wanted to have a relationship with Peter. He wanted to have a relationship with these disciples. And so after Jesus got done teaching, he said to the disciples, he said, he said to Peter and these other men, he said, listen, He said, I want you to take your boat, and I keep calling them disciples. They're not actually his disciples yet. I apologize. But anyhow, he says, let's take the boat. And he says, I want you to go out into the deep water. And he says, I want you to throw your net overboard. And he said, I said, he said, we're going to catch some fish. Well, Peter said, he said, listen, 
He said, we have worked all night long. He said, we have been throwing the net over and over and over every spot. You know how fishermen, they say, oh, this is the good spot. They rode over there and they threw their net down. No fish. They rode over here, they threw the net down. No fish. And Peter said, we've been doing that all night long. But Peter also said this. He said, Jesus, if you want me to do it, he says, I will do it. And so Peter took his net and Jesus said, throw in the net. And Peter threw the net in the water. And you know what Peter was probably expecting? Probably just the same old thing like it normally happened. Oh, just pull it in. It's just going to be empty. And when he went to pull it in, do you think, wait a minute, something's different here. Whoa, it's pulling back. And he started pulling and pulling. And guess what? Their net was absolutely filled with fishes. There was, there was so many fishes. In fact, this was probably the greatest catch of fish that Peter had ever seen in his entire life. He had been a fisherman for a long time, and he was just astonished at how many fish they had caught that day. Well, when, when they finally got back to shore, they actually had to have some of their friends help them to get all the fish onto the shore. And when they finally got on the shore, you know what Peter did? He fell down on his knees before Jesus. Now, Peter had, you might say, uh, heard Jesus talk. He had listened to him. But when he saw this miracle take place, when he saw all these fish that they got in their net, Peter fell down before Jesus, and he, he actually said this. He said, he said, leave me. He said, depart from me. He says, I'm a sinful man. He says, I don't, I don't deserve to be around you. I, don't des- I, I, I can't be around you. But Jesus said to Peter and the other men that were with him, he says, he says this. He says, I want you to do something different now. He says, I want you to be my followers. And he said this. He said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. That sounds strange, doesn't it? Do you think they're going to take their net and throw them on top of people and catch them like that? No. He didn't want them to just throw a net out and catch people physically. He wanted them to, you might say, bring people to Jesus and tell others about Jesus. Now, in in our lesson today, you know what made the difference in Peter's life? The one thing that made the difference is he just had to listen to what Jesus had to say. He had to do something called obey or obedience. Now, the question that we're going to ask you today, and I want you to think about, will you follow Jesus by obeying his word? And uh, in our lesson today, we talked about how that they had an empty net. At first, when they, they were fishing all night, they couldn't catch anything. They couldn't catch any fish. But... Who made the difference in that net? It was Jesus. And listen, let me tell you this. In your life, there's somebody that can make a difference in your life. And that's Jesus Christ. And he can take away that problem that we talked about earlier that's, that, that makes us feel sad and lonely and feels empty at times. What do we need? We don't need fish, do we? We need something to fill our heart and fill our soul. What we need is Jesus Christ in our lives. And this week... I want to give you, even tonight, an opportunity if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. If you're not a Christian, I want you to know what it means to be a Christian. So right now, what I want to ask you to do is we're going to get kind of quiet for just a minute. I want you to just close your eyes for just a minute, and we're going to pray in just a second. But I want you to think about this. I want you to think in your own heart, in your own life. You know, do you have that emptiness inside? Is Jesus in your life? Is Jesus living inside of your heart, or is your heart empty because you don't know Jesus Christ as your Savior? Now, we might all have feelings of, oh, I feel sad at times, I feel empty, but Jesus wants to come in your heart, take away your sin, and, uh, and be your Savior. And right now, as before we pray, I just want to ask you, just nobody's looking around to see what everybody else is doing, but how many of you are a Christian? Would you raise your hand and say, I've done that, I've asked Jesus to come into my heart, I'm a Christian. And I know what it means to be a Christian. Good. Now you put your hands back down for a minute. Is there somebody today that says, you know what? In my life, my life is empty because I don't know Jesus. And I'd like to, though. I'd like to know who Jesus is. I'd like to know more about Jesus that we're talking about today. Is there somebody like that that wants to raise their hand and say, pray for me. I need to know more about who Jesus is. Is there anybody like that? All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, I pray for these boys and girls. I thank you that uh, they all raised their hand today and said they know you as Savior, but maybe today there's someone 
here that really wasn't being honest. They really weren't being truthful. Maybe they raised their hand because they, they felt like everybody else was raising their hand. Lord, may they be willing to talk to someone about what it means to be a Christian. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, now let's look up here for just a moment because here's our memory verse. This is what Jesus said to Peter. He said, then he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Let's say this together. We'll start with the reference and we'll say the verse and then we'll end with the reference. We're going to learn this in our class time, but let's say it up here together. Here we go. Matthew 4, 19. Then he said unto them, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Matthew 4, 19. All right, very good. Thank you for your attention today, and uh, thank you for listening to our lesson. I think that, um, and uh, remember, I hope you're paying attention today and thinking about some of the details of our story, because later on, Pastor Joel's going to come back, and he's going to ask some questions, all right?